God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. You are most warmly welcome to today's Sunday School. The power of God shall overshadow your life as you join us. Father, we thank you for another time before you. We thank you for your grace, your love, and your care. We thank you for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your power, your love, and your might. We thank you because you have never failed your people, and you never fail us. Father, as we go into today's Bible study and Sunday school, lay your hands upon us and open our understanding in the name of Jesus. Let the Spirit of the Lord God of Elijah open our understanding in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. For the last two Sundays, we have been studying Babylon and the end times. Babylon and the end times. And we started by introducing Babylon. We started by discussing what Babylon in the physical was. And we discussed the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had, which talks about all the kingdoms that are ever going to be in this earth. Once again today, we take a step further in our studies. In the book of Daniel, chapter 2, from verse 30. King Nebuchadnezzar had had a dream, and his wise men, astrologers, and sorcerers could not tell him the dream, neither show interpretation. He threatened to kill all of them. But Daniel said, let me pray. And Daniel came to tell the king the dream, and to interpret the dream. He said, Daniel chapter 2, verse 31, Thou, O king, swest, and behold a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee. And the form thereof was terrible. The image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thigh of brass, his legs of iron, but his feet was part iron and part clay. Thou sawest till his stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and break them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broke into pieces together, and became like the shaft of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them, and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain, and filled the earth. And Daniel now began to interpret that dream. What the head of gold stood for, what the arms of silver stood, how arms of silver stood for. And that was where we stopped last time. Today we go to the belly of brass. Daniel said that the next kingdom to arise, closely related to the silver, was the belly and thigh of brass. History tells us that this was Greece during the reign of Alexander the Great. They were the next government to rule the whole world. This reign did not last very long, but long enough to establish the spiritual kingdom of brass. Now our first concern is to find out what spiritual kingdom was represented by Greece. The belly of brass. We found out what is represented by gold and silver, not the brass. What did Greece give to the world by way of natural benefits? Greece, at the time Christ was here on earth, was the center of education and culture. Great philosophers abounded in Greece, and their beautiful classic Greek language greatly influenced the rest of the world. God used the Greek language to express the depth of truth in the New Testament. Our modern sports, including the World Olympics, had their inspiration in Greece. Art, science, and medicine all are rooted in the intellectual atmosphere of this kingdom. The belly and thigh speak to us of appetites and the reproductive organs, because that's where they are present in the body. Entertainment, art, science and education in general and the strength of this kingdom of brass the belly of the image of nebuchadnezzar it is easy to see that these things are still in the earth today and daily growing in strength and they are contrary to the true kingdom of god the vast majority of those who claim to be educated are violently opposed to the things of god Modern educators are viciously attacking Christian principles and trying to establish antichrist thinking into the minds of the children. They try to destroy young people's faith in God 
by declaring creation and Bible truth to be religious superstition, while setting forth their own wild and changing theories as higher education for the intellectual. The world of entertainment has become a sex spot of vice and lust. Those in charge of media have made violence, rape, and murder to be commonplace. There are plenty of criminals on our seats because of this. Our sports world has been turned into professional business with a lot of money involved and drugs and intrigues. Sports heroes have become national idols. Football, basketball, boxing, and other sports have become the epitome of the first kingdom of this belly and thigh of brass. All this is symbolized by Greece are still with us today. The image of Nebuchadnezzar is still standing. The rock has not smitten the feet of the image yet. Legs of iron. History makes us to see which world government was represented by the legs of iron. Following Alexander the Great of Greece, the next world kingdom was Rome of the Caesars, the kingdom of Rome. And the strength of Rome was in two things, its political system and its military power. They are both as strong as iron. Its political system with the law, with the law-making body of the Senate, is still being used as a model of government. And the strength of an emperor with dictator power backed up by the Senate and the army was awesome, indeed. So Rome stood upon these two iron legs, political government and military power. These two things are still a part of the world's force system today. There is no way to estimate the damage done to the world and its people through these two forces, political and military power. But God has an army, but not of this world. God has a government ready to take over the kingdoms of this world, according to Revelation chapter 11 verse 15. But his government is not of this world's systems. The political governments and military systems of today are antichrist and will be utterly destroyed by the kingdom that God will soon raise and cause to smite the image at his feet. But until the rock smites that image, there will continue to be wars, there will continue to be pestilence, there will continue to be earthquakes, there will continue to be fearful happenings, terrible occurrences, with greater and greater devastation, because men will be making more powerful weapons and pollute the earth more. The ass of men are as wicked as they were when men fought each other with clubs and rocks. But today these wicked men are pushing buttons and wiping out thousands of innocent men and women, causing untold suffering and agony to those who survive. And so shall that system continue until it is destroyed by the rock cut out of the mountain. May the Lord open our understanding in the name of Jesus. Now the feet of clay, the feet and toes of this image were made of iron mixed with clay. Now clay speaks to us of the human element and this has weakened the strength of the iron in the legs. For the feet, the foundation upon which the entire image stands has come to an age of civilization where human element has rebelled against the dictatorship and destruction seen in that which Rome symbolized. What we have here is civilization coming to an age where there will never again be a unified dictatorship ruling over the entire world. This image is telling us that one. The clay and the iron cannot and will not cleave one to another, meaning they will never be united as one. According to this dream and the interpretation God gave to Daniel, Rome was the last kingdom that will ever rule the entire world. The feet are an extension of the legs of iron we still have on earth today. The powers of the political government and the military power upon which the holy image stands, but they are divided as you can see. This is why there's so much trouble going on, wars going on all the times. When you have one unified government under a single dictator, there may be occasional uprisings to be put down, but there will be no wars. But today the world is divided, and so shall it remain. There will never be another world government under man's rule. They can plan for it, they can predict it, but it will not happen, according to the image of Nebuchadnezzar that Daniel was telling us the interpretation. What about all this prediction that there will be a final world government under the Antichrist? Look at the image and try to find out where it fits. Many have come forth since the days of Rome to conquer the world and all have failed. A man called Charlemagne tried it to rule the world but he never quite made it. Then Napoleon came. People thought that Napoleon might be the next leader. But he failed and was exiled to a place
where he died. Mussolini came. Many thought he would be the Antichrist that would rule the world until he was hung and disappointed their predictions. Adolf Hitler thought he was destined to rule the world through the super race. He tried to develop this. We had World War II as a result, but no world ruler. Many prophecies went forth that the common market of Europe would be the ten toed kingdom, but it never developed. They failed to see that the clay and the iron in the toes would never be unified or cleave one to another. Many have set their hope on communism to be the Antichrist government that will give us a world kingdom so that their interpretation of scripture could be fulfilled and the church will be raptured off the earth. But please notice that the iron in the feet never overcomes the clay, nor does the clay destroy the iron. Understand this very well. What then is the next world government? We are plainly told in Daniel chapter 2 verse 44, who will rule the entire world next. And this rule will not end. It shall stand forever. It is a stone cut without hand, meaning that it was of no human origin. And in verse 44, he interprets this to say that in the days of these kings, in the days of these kings, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. It shall break in pieces and consume all other kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Please note the words, and in the days of of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which days in the days of the feet and toes of iron and clay, not in the days of legs of iron, the Roman Empire, not during the life of Christ and in the early church, not in the Old Testament, but this kingdom shall be set up in the last days, the days we are now living in. This means that what Daniel predicted was not set up in the days of the early church. The church in the last days will far exceed what took place in the early church. We can see by the day of Nebuchadnezzar where we are by God's calendar. Our position is that we are not in the legs of iron, nor in the belly of brass kingdom, certainly not in the head of gold of Nebuchadnezzar's reign. We are in the feet and toes of the image. That's where we are now. We are in the feet and toes of this image. Actually, we are on the mountain of God, being formed into a rock by the Spirit of God. But all these other forces still exist on the earth, for the rock has not yet smitten the feet of the image. Yea, God is doing a special work in our day. Romans chapter 8 is coming alive to us again, and the groaning of the creature is about to be answered by the unveiling of God's sons. The rock is cut loose from the mountains. Out of God comes forth a company of overcomers. He says, He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of fire. And that's Revelation chapter 2, verse 26 to 27. Let's take our Bibles and open to Daniel chapter 7 from verse 13. Daniel 7, 13. Daniel saw another vision. Daniel 7, 13 said, I saw in the night visions. And behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion, and glory, and a kingdom, that all people, nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. This is Daniel chapter 7, from verse 13 to verse 14. Looking back to this scripture, we see Daniel having a night vision, and he saw one like a son of man. What he saw was Jesus Christ, the head of the body of Christ, now seen in the fullness of his entire body. In other words, what he saw was the body of Christ, the church along with their head. This one was brought before the ancient of days, and there was given to him dominion and glory and the kingdom. All people were to serve this one, and his kingdom shall never pass away. Daniel 2.44 he shows us that this is the body of Christ he sees. He says it in verse 18, But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom, and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. It is further explained in verses 21 to 22, where he says that the enemy made war with the saints, and defeated them. Until the ancient of days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. This should be not to convince us that what God has planned for us is not fully here yet, but it's close. The stone, the Bible says, 
filling the whole earth. It is fairly easy to relate to Bible terminology and believe what it says because it is in the Bible. But to put that into language you should understand and that relates to our human experience is very important. If we are to know what God is saying, in other words, just what or who is this rock cut out of the mountain? How does it actually smite the feet of the image? Who is this image today? What means of method does the rock use to destroy the image? This is not to be answered by our imaginations, but by what the scripture tells us in plain New Testament language. The image of Nebuchadnezzar is still standing today, beloved. It represents the forces that rule over the lives of men and women on this planet Earth. Religion, money, and economics in general, language, education, medicine, and all other parts of our modern culture. And finally, the powerful forces of political government and military power. All these things control our earthly lives. Religion is the greatest force in dividing men. Economics and difference in language also separates men and nations. And in particular, the political government of each nation and its military power makes other nations afraid of it, thus they become enemies and stand ready to go to war at any time. All these dividing forces must be broken down if the world is to come under the government of God. Can you visualize a world where all nations spoke the same language? All the people in every nation were saved and filled with the Holy Spirit? Where violence, crime and sins do not exist? Where all nations were prosperous and their people well fed and happy? Do you think there will be anyone under those circumstances? There will be no need to maintain an army. Probably not even a police force. Where do you find Israel filled with policemen in the Old Testament to hold down crime? They had judges to handle disputes and settle arguments. But where are the police stations and the jails? Instead of having 8% of the nation either in jail or involved in putting people in jail, such as policemen, judges, attorneys, jailers, they had one tribe out of 13 set aside just for spiritual ministry delivered. Those people who walk under the blessings of God and become prosperous and happy as long as they went God's way. But how is God going to destroy the mess the world is now in? and bring back divine government? How is it going to bring you serve God because of ambitions, pleasures, and all kinds of other things like money? Have you neglected to seek the loss for Christ? Do you evangelize? Have you neglected to witness consistently with your mouth for the Lord Jesus Christ? Has your life shown that Jesus is concerned with the loss? Are you secretly pleased over the misfortune of another? Are you secretly annoyed over the accomplishment or advancement of another person? Are you guilty of any contention or strife? Do you quarrel, argue, or engage in heated, unnecessary discussions? Are you a partaker of any division or party spirit? Are you part of those who split churches? Are there people who you deliberately slight? Have you robbed God by withholding his deal of time, talents, and money? Have you failed to support mission work either in prayer or offerings? Are you on the attitude towards any person or thing? Are you always irritable or cranky? Do you carry hidden anger? Do you get angry? Do you have a bad you partake in worldly amusements? Do you find it necessary to seek satisfaction from questionable sources? Are you doing certain things that show that you are not satisfied in the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you into certain things you should not be doing at all? Have you virtually called God a liar by doubting his word? Do you worry? Is your sin pure or suggest unholy things? Do you indulge in any unclean entertainment? Are you guilty of lust, lustful looks, lustful behavior? Are you irregular in attendance of services? Do you hate prayer in that spiritual Babylon now? And the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. We're going to stop here today and we'll continue next time. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for opening our understanding, making us to see where we stand in the scheme of things. Father, keep us standing by your power. Lay your hands of fire and power upon us. Anoint us by the power of the Holy Ghost and put all our enemies to shame. Make us ready for your coming. Lay your hands upon us. Lay your hands upon our body, soul, and spirit. Anoint us by the power of the Holy Ghost. Empower us to live the kind of life that will satisfy heaven. To you, Father, be the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. Now, join the rest of the broadcast. Bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. It is your friend in the School of Prayer and Deliverance, Daniel Lukoya. You are most warmly welcome to this broadcast. 
The power of God will overshadow your life as you join us. The spirit of the living God will move in your body, soul, and spirit and overshadow you with his presence. God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right there where you are, I'd like you to pick any song of praises and sing it loud and clear to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. If you are happy that the Lord has been with you and has been protecting you, pick any song of praises and sing it loud and clear to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. Thou art worthy, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For Thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasures they are. And were created, thou art worthy, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For Thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasures they are, and were created. Father, we thank you once again for a time like this before you. Father, we thank you for the mightiness of your name and your power. Father, we thank you because you have never failed, you will never fail. Father, thank you for a time like this and thank you because you have your way in the wind and in the wild wind i give you all the glory all the honor and all the adoration father accept our thanks in the name of jesus lord continue to lay your hands upon us open our understanding O oh lord thank you heavenly father and as many as are gathered on this broadcast i pray that blessings will never depart from your life the lord will bless you with uncommon blessings and he will put all your enemies to shame. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you in Jesus' name. Today, we're looking at the 50 enemies of prayer. 50 enemies of prayers. And it's good to pay close attention so that your prayers will not know any hindrance. 50 enemies of prayers. We read from Psalm 35, verse 13. Psalm number 35, verse 13. It reads, But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled myself with fasting, and my prayer returned into my own bosom. My prayers returned onto my own bosom. A situation could arise where prayers return onto the bosom. In Psalm 65, verse 2, Psalm 65, verse 2, said, O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Beloved, prayer is the greatest privilege on this side of heaven. Prayer is the greatest expression of God's power in the world. There is nothing that prayer cannot control. Prayer gives God's blank checks unto his children. God renews our strength through prayers. The more you pray, the stronger you become. Prayers is the root and the fountain of many blessings. Prayer is the master strategy that God gives to us to defeat our enemies. I pray that the power of prayer will come upon you in the name of Jesus. Prayer is God's ordained way to give us uncommon miracles, uncommon testimonies. Prayer is the greatest of all forces. Prayer is the greatest blow sent to Satan. Like somebody has said, 
Satan laughs at our toil. Satan mocks our wisdom. But trembles when we pray. May we become prayer warriors in the name of Jesus. Prayer makes dark clouds to withdraw. Prayer is more powerful than those forces that even hold the planets in place. Because prayers can suspend the loss of the universe. It has happened before. There is no other power on earth. Let me say that again. There is no other power on earth that the enemy of our soul hates and fears as the power of prayer. There is no other power on earth that the enemies of our soul hates and fears as the power of prayer. But then, prayers have enemies. Enemies because there are forces that prevent men from prayers. There are situations when heavens become like brass. There are situations when prayer look like hardwood. There are times when prayers even appear to bounce back. The greatest satanic power, they are not the powers that kill. The greatest satanic power, they are not the powers that end up preaching. The greatest satanic power, they are not the powers that drink blood. The greatest satanic power, they are not the powers that in their churches. The greatest satanic powers, they are the powers that actually in their prayers. The greatest satanic powers are the powers that in their prayers. Oh, that that unless of prayer will fall upon us. Oh, that the mysteries of prayer be open unto us we will experience dumbfounding breakthroughs. That's why the Bible says, my house shall be called the house of prayer. Let's now look at these enemies of prayers, which I'm going to run through very quickly, then we'll start to pray. Number one is asking amiss. We are asking amiss. Asking what should not be asked. Asking what's really you should not put before god two is praying to change god's decrees what god has said you want to pray to change it three is praying to make god to act contrary to himself we want god to act contrary to himself it's an enemy of prayer. Four is unforgiveness. As far as you have unforgiveness in your spirit, your prayers will not be answered. Jesus said, Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Five is praying to avoid chastisement that you actually deserve. We are praying to avoid the discipline you actually deserve know for sure beloved that sins can be forgiven but the consequences you will surely bear david was forgiven but cursed david tried to use prayer to avoid discipline but he could not six praying when you do not want to do what the word of god is saying and acting on it Seven is praying that is prompted by selfish personal motives. Selfish personal motives. Eight, praying when you listen to the word of God but you do not do it. Nine, praying meaningless prayers. Prayers that have no meaning. Ten, if the prayer is vain repetition, it will not be answered. There are repetitions in prayer. Elijah prayed seven times at the Mount Carmel. Jesus prayed three times in the Garden of Gethsemane. So there are repetitions in prayer, but there are also vain repetitions. May you not be candidate of vain repetition in the name of Jesus. Eleven, pray when God's words is not in you. I'm not interested in Bible study. I'm not interested in reading the word of God, but you just want to start praying. Without works, 
you don't want to take any action just praying without works you are praying for breakthroughs but you do nothing 13 when you are a doubter doubt is an enemy of prayer 14 is when you are praying without faith in your heart prayers without faith 15 if you pray and you do not confess your known sin it's an entrance to prayer 16 if your prayer is contrary to god's known will it should not be answered so praying contrary to god's will is an enemy of prayer 17 if you are shrinking back from accepting your responsibility and you are pushing it to prayer it's an enemy of prayer 18 is when you have zeal without knowledge you just have zeal but no knowledge 19 if you refuse to seek God with all your heart it's an enemy of prayer 20 if you do not ask like Jesus said ask 21 if you do not seek like Jesus said seek 22 if you do not knock like Jesus said knock 23 if you are the kind of Christians who refuse to bear much fruit you can be an enemy of your prayer 24 if what you are asking for is not for the father's glory it's an enemy of prayer 25 if your prayer is just babbling just babbling words 26 lack of love don't love people you have people you still hate it will block your prayers 27 gossiping and backbiting the same mouth you are using to call upon god if you engage it in gossiping and backbiting it will hinder your prayers 28 if you quit if you give up quitting giving up say I'm, i've prayed enough i'm not praying anymore it's an enemy of prayer 29 if you are unthankful you are in great it will block your prayers 30 if you are serving other gods you have other gods are just using prayer as a medication when other gods have failed it won't be answered 31 if you're a friend of the world you are not a friend of god you're serving the gods of this present world the prayers will not be answered 32 if you lack the fear of god you do not fear god at all and you are praying it is a waste of time 33 if you continue in any known sin it will block your prayers 34 if you are not humble it will block your prayers 35 if you are not righteous it will block your prayer the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much there must be righteousness in your prayers 36 if you are very bitter you have bitterness in your heart against people it will block your prayers 37 if your tongue are uttering wicked things it will block your prayers 38 if you are not praying in reverent submission it will block your prayers 39 if you are praying to be seen of men it will block your prayers and 40 if you do not honor your wife if you do not honor your husband as written in first peter 3 7 it will block your prayers there are scriptures for the 14 things i've told you but the time on this broadcast is too short for us to refer to those scriptures 41 when your prayers become sin when your prayer becomes sin in psalm 109 verse 7 it tells us prayers could become sinful psalm 109 verse 7 it reads when he shall be judged let him be condemned and let his prayer become sin a situation could arise where prayers become sin in psalm 80 verse 4 
God was not angry because people did not pray. God was angry because of the kind of prayer they offered to him. He said, Oh Lord, God of hosts, Psalm 80 verse 4. How long would I be angry against the prayer of thy people? God is angry against the prayer of people. Then in Psalm 35 verse 13 that we have read before, it says prayer can backfire. It can bounce back on somebody's head. Say, but as for me, Psalm 35 verse 13, but as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humble my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned unto my own bosom. Prayer can bounce back. Then in the popular Proverbs 28 9, it says prayer could become an abomination. May your prayers not become abomination in Jesus' name. He said, He that turneth away is here from hearing the law. He that turneth away is here from hearing the law. Even his prayer shall become abomination. So there are situations when prayers become sin. It is a fearful fact that not all prayer is good. Wrong praying is just as sinful as not praying at all. Wrong praying is just as sinful as not praying at all. That's why the Bible talks about praying amiss. Any prayer meeting, someone to pray against a particular person is witchcraft prayers. You are praying to abort pregnancies is witchcraft prayers. You are praying to snatch another person's husband is witchcraft prayers. It will backfire. You are praying with an idol in your heart it will backfire. You are praying to divorce your wife, divorce your husband it will backfire. You are praying to extort money it will backfire because those are not good prayers. The art of biblical praying, unfortunately, is getting lost. And the Almighty is not pleased with all prayers. And there are plenty of very sinful prayers. 42. Is praying with an idol in your heart? Book of Ezekiel tells us that when you come to a prophet and you have an idol in your heart, the Lord will answer you according to the idol in your heart. It's like you are writing your check and expect God to just sign it. You did not bring God into it when you were preparing the check. Now, after writing the check, now you want God to just sign it. When you are praying with a very ambitious mindset, and you are asking for His will when you already know it, that's praying with an idol in your heart. 43. is praying with your back towards God. You are praying with your back towards God. You are showing much love with your mouth, but your heart is so far from God. You are praying while defying God's command and ignoring His standards. You are hoping that God will overlook your disobedience. That's what we call praying with turning your back to God. 44. Is public prayer without private prayer? You like to pray in the public, but you don't like to pray in the private. Our Lord in Matthew 6 5 denounced the hypocrites who love to pray for sure. When there is little or no private prayer, public prayer is sinful. To pray in public while neglecting private prayer is sinful praying. 45. When you are praying as a substitute for obedience, you are praying as a substitute for obedience. God is calling for obedience. You are praying instead of obeying what God wants you to do. When there is disobedience in the camp and you are praying, what you should do is to just obey. When there is disobedience in the church and you are praying, what you are doing is what you should do is to just obey. When there is disobedience in the heart, the disobedience in the heart will hinder the blessing of God. More prayers was not the remedy when there is disobedience. Joshua was praying. But the prayer was when, when Israel committed sin and stole, and Achan stole, and Israel was defeated, Joshua started to pray. But more prayer was not the remedy on that occasion. Their great need was to get the sin out of the camp. So praying instead of repenting is sinful prayer. 46 is selfish praying. Prayer is meant to be God-centered, not self-centered. Balaam prayed all night. But his motive in praying was wrong. He greatly desired material wealth. God had told him not to go, but he desired the wealth. So selfish praying is sinful. Faith 
let's pray is sinful. To pray in unbelief is just as bad as not praying at all. And to pray with the evil heart of unbelief is sinful prayer. 47. Praying to yourself. Like that man did in Luke 18 11. He was building a case for his own righteousness when compared to others. So I'm not like that tax collector. I'm a Pharisee. I'm righteous. He's building the case for himself, praying to himself. He's broadcasting self, broadcasting his position, broadcasting self esteem and self image. 48. Praying to men rather than God is sinful prayer. You don't pray to any saint. You don't pray to any human being. You should pray to God. Praying to many instead of God is sinful prayer. 49. Praying just out of duty. Out of duty. Praying and not expecting anything as a result is sinful praying. You are just trying to fulfill a duty. Then such people are now disappointed when nothing happens because uh, they are just praying to fulfill a duty. They are not praying really uh, out of a sincere heart. And this is a, a very serious matter. A person is praying as a religious exercise. You are praying because they are asking you to just pray. You are praying as a ritual. You are praying as a routine. You are praying while producing a pious sense of having done one's duty. It's not the right prayer. You are doing prayer consultants all over the place instead of seeking for heaven. 50 is hypocritical praying. But the Bible says some people pray lengthy prayers for sure. Some people engage in mindless rambling that have been uttered hundreds of times without their hearts in it. Meaningless repetitions is sinful prayers. Let me add a little bit more. 51 is praying for the ears of men. You are phrasing your prayers in order to impress those who are listening to you. Prayers designed for the ears of men rather than the heart of God is sinful prayer. 52 is praying while dodging responsibility. Asking God to do for you what he has asked you to do for yourself is sinful prayer. You ignore the white and black commands of scripture and you are praying. It's sinful praying. To pray while you are not taking any steps to correct your sinful life is sinful praying. 53 is praying from an unclean heart. Unconfessed sins in your heart. You are seeking to approach the Creator with an unclean and impure heart. Is sinful prayer. These are enemies of prayers. These are enemies of prayer. And I want you to understand that we need to defeat these enemies in our lives if we must pray correctly. The disciples went to Jesus. Lord, teach us to pray which is different from teach us how to pray. A lot of people know how to pray, but do not pray correctly. A lot of prayer bounces off the root of the mouth. If prayers are to be a force, we must conform our prayers with biblical patterns. If our prayers are to be a force, then we must pray correctly. If our prayers are to be a force, then we must pray in the spirit. Spiritual praying will always line up with the written word of God. Spiritual praying is spirit born, spirit guided, spirit empowered. Sinful praying is praying in a human level. Man apart from God. When the man is separated from God, he will naturally pray corrupt prayers. Prayer acceptable to God. Is only possible by the power of the Holy Spirit. You need for this to grip your heart and for you to cry out, Lord, teach me to pray. I'm praying that, oh God, teach your people the lost art of spiritual praying. And anyone who has been praying and miss, Father, lay your hands upon them. Before we start praying, I also like you to understand. Certain things prayer cannot do. <laughs> Number one, prayer cannot change the word of God. Prayer cannot change the word of God. Psalm 33 11 says, 
the counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. Prayer cannot change the word of God. Prayer cannot change the word of God. Prayers cannot change the word of God. Matthew 24, 35 says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Two, prayer cannot change the nature of God. You can't change the nature of God. Malachi 3 says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. I pray that the spirit of prayer, the engine of prayer, will come upon in the name of Jesus and everything the enemy has been doing to push us away from the arena of prayer let the power of God demolish them in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen close your eyes now and pray this loud and clear every enemy of prayer in my life your load and go in the name of Jesus. Every enemy of prayer in my life, pack your load and go in the name of Jesus. Every enemy of prayer in my life, pack your load and go in the name of Jesus. Every enemy of prayer in my life, pack your load and go in the name of Jesus. Every enemy of prayer in my life, pack your load and go in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say, anointing to pray to get results fall upon me in the name of Jesus anointing to pray and get results come upon me in the name of Jesus anointing to pray and get results come upon me in the name of Jesus in Jesus name we pray amen oh God arise and put the engine of prayer into my soul in the name of Jesus oh God arise and put the engine of prayer into my soul in the name of Jesus oh God arise and put the engine of prayer into my my soul in the name of Jesus oh God arise and put the engine of prayer into my soul in the name of Jesus oh God arise and put the engine of prayer into my soul in the name of Jesus oh God arise and put the engine of prayer into my soul in the name of Jesus oh God arise and put the engine of prayer into my soul in the name of Jesus oh God arise and put the engine of prayer into my soul in the name of Jesus oh God arise and put the engine of prayer into my soul in the name of Jesus Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Anointing for accurate prayers. Fall upon me in the name of Jesus. Anointing for accurate prayers. Fall upon me in the name of Jesus. Anointing for accurate prayers. Fall upon me in the name of Jesus. Anointing for accurate prayers. Fall upon me in the name of Jesus. Anointing for accurate prayers. Fall upon me in the name of Jesus. Anointing for accurate prayers. Fall upon me in the name of Jesus. Anointing for accurate prayers. Fall upon me in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So every power resisting my prayers, clear away in the name of Jesus. Every power resisting my prayers, clear away in the name of Jesus. Every power resisting my prayers, clear away in the name of Jesus. Every power resisting my prayers, clear away in the name of Jesus. Every power resisting my prayers, clear away in the name of Jesus. Every power resisting my prayers, clear away in the name of Jesus. Every power resisting my prayers, clear away in the name of Jesus. Every power resisting my prayers, clear away in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Every power is in my prayers. Clear away in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say prayer blockers. Prayer blockers. I'm not your candidate. Clear away in the name of Jesus. Prayer blockers. I'm not your candidate. Clear away in the name of Jesus. Prayer blockers. I'm not your candidate. Clear away in the name of Jesus. Prayer blockers. I'm not your candidate. Clear away in the name of Jesus. Prayer blockers. I am not your candidate. Clear away in the name of Jesus. Prayer blockers. I'm not your candidate. Clear away in the name of Jesus. Prayer blockers. I'm not your candidate. Clear away in the name of Jesus. Prayer blockers. I am not your candidate. Clear away in the name of Jesus. Prayer blockers. I'm not your candidate. Clear away in the name of Jesus. Prayer blockers. I'm not your candidate. Clear away in the name of Jesus. Prayer blockers. I am not your candidate. Clear away in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you are listening to me and you have received the baptism in the Holy Spirit, 
with a very loud voice. I want you to begin to pray in the spirit for the next few seconds. Masi kapo li kadi karobo kasentia. Rimo ka makala kapo kesetende ya bo shende rabo kopola katanda kanda. Rimo kasanta, raise your voice, raise your voice, raise your voice as you pray in the spirit. Masi kapo ndeke ya bo shende rabo koponda ka. Na rimo soponde ke ya bo shente rabo sa. Makapola ka ya bo koshetea. Ribo soponde ke tende ke ya bo sha. Makaponde ke ya. Ribo soponde ka. Ribo kaponde ke te la ka ya bo shanda. Ribo sepende ka ya ba. Ka ya bo kosante ya ba. Amen. Amen. Now shout this next prayer loud and clear. With reckless violence. This is not a time to negotiate with the enemy. Can you shout this loud and clear? Powers assigned to dry up my well of blessings. Die in the name of Jesus. Powers assigned to dry up my well of blessings. Die in the name of Jesus. Powers assigned to dry up my well of blessings. Die in the name of Jesus. Powers assigned to dry up my well of blessings. Die in the name of Jesus. Powers assigned to dry up my well of blessings. Die in the name of Jesus. Powers assigned to dry up my well of blessings. Die in the name of Jesus. Powers assigned to dry up my well of blessings. Die in the name of Jesus. Powers assigned to dry up my well of blessings die in the name of Jesus powers assigned to dry up my well of blessings die in the name of Jesus powers assigned to dry up my well of blessings die in the name of Jesus in Jesus name we pray amen any dark cloud covering my opportunities scatter in the name of Jesus any dark cloud covering my opportunities scatter in the name of Jesus any dark clouds Scattering my opportunities. Scatter in the name of Jesus. Scatter in the name of Jesus. Scatter in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say, my father, my father, my father. Water every dry land in my life. In the name of Jesus. My father, my father, my father. Water every dry land in my life. In the name of Jesus. My father, my father, my father. Water every dry land in my life. In the name of Jesus. My father, my father, my father. Water every dry land in my life. In the name of Jesus. My father, my father, my father. Water every dry land in my life. In the name of Jesus. My father, my father, my father. Water every dry land in my life. In the name of Jesus. My father, my father, my father. Water every dry land in my life in the name of Jesus. My father, my father, my father. Water every dry land in my life in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Powers working against my testimonies. You are liars. Die in the name of Jesus. Powers working against my testimonies. You are liars. Die in the name of Jesus. Powers working against my testimonies. You are liars. Die in the name of Jesus. Powers working against my testimonies you are liars die in the name of Jesus powers working against my testimonies you are liars die in the name of Jesus in Jesus name we pray amen powers are signed to turn my blessings to rags lion of Judah tear them to pieces in the name of Jesus powers are signed to turn my blessing to rags lion of Judah Tear them to pieces in the name of Jesus. Powers are signed to turn my blessings to rags. Lion of Judah, tear them to pieces. Lion of Judah, tear them to pieces in the name of Jesus. Lion of Judah, tear them to pieces in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you say powers are signed to kill me before the manifestation of my joy? Your time is up. Die in the name of Jesus. Powers are signed to kill me before the manifestation of my joy. Your time is up. Die in the name of Jesus. Powers are signed to kill me before the manifestation of my joy. Your time is up. Die in the name of Jesus. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, I'm praying for anyone who is joining this broadcast now or who has been with us in this broadcast now that any challenge that the enemy is bringing against your health, any challenge that the enemy is bringing against your body, any challenge that the enemy is bringing against your soul, any challenge that the enemy is bringing against any part of your life, I command those challenges to become testimonies now in the name of Jesus, right there where you are. 
whether it is convenient for the enemy or not any stranger living in your body any agenda of darkness for your body i command them to clear away 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 in the name of jesus i bind and cast out every stranger in the body in the soul in the spirit in the name of jesus right there where you are receive your healing in the name of jesus anything moving about in your body anything tormenting your body I command them to depart in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Shout this again loud and clear. Devour us waiting at the door of my breakthroughs. Die by fire in the name of Jesus. Devour us waiting at the door of my breakthroughs. Die by fire in the name of Jesus. Devour us waiting at the door of my breakthroughs. Die by fire in the name of Jesus. Devour us waiting at the door of my breakthroughs. Die by fire in the name of Jesus. The virus waiting at the door of my breakthroughs. Die by fire in the name of Jesus. Die by fire in the name of Jesus. Die by fire in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say occultic giants confronting my peace. I cut you down in the name of Jesus. Occultic giants confronting my peace. I cut you down in the name of Jesus. Occultic giants confronting my peace. I cut you down. 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 Occultic giants confronting my peace. I cut you down in the name of Jesus. I cut you down in Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 Father, I'm praying for all who have been gathered on this line that they shall be well with you in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against your life shall prosper. Every enemy that comes against you shall flee from before your face. They come against you in one way, they shall flee in seven ways. The hand of God shall be mighty upon your life. Every pronouncement of the enemy for your life shall not come to pass. The Spirit of God will move you forward in the new way. You shall recover. You shall have divine restoration in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ thank you heavenly father in jesus name amen if you have water oil or mantle you want us to pray on bring them out right now father we thank you for the oil the water and the mantle let your power fall upon this material, sir. You say, if any is sick among us, you call for the elders to anoint the person with oil. Let your power fall upon the oil in the name of Jesus. Let your power fall upon the water in the name of Jesus. Let your power fall upon the mountain in the name of Jesus. Everywhere they land, let your infirmity flee in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your power fall upon whoever encounters them in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive the touch of God. Order. in your life in your body in your soul in your spirit thank you heavenly father glory be to the name of the lord in jesus name we pray amen 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 i have an assignment for you all tonight an assignment that we must carry out this is the first episode of that assignment that assignment starts at 11:55 five minutes to midnight five minutes to midnight let me give you a scriptural background for the assignment it's in exodus chapter 12 verse 13 and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are and when i see the blood i will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when i smite the land of egypt there is something known as a Passover blood. By 11.55, take any of the blood of Jesus' songs, there are plenty of them. You can sing, there is power, power, what the walk in power. In the blood of the Lamb, there is power, power, what the walk in power. In the precious blood of the Lamb, you can sing, there is power, there is power, there is power in the blood of Jesus. You can sing, there is power mighty in the blood, there is power mighty in the blood, there is power mighty in the blood of Jesus Christ, there is power mighty in the blood. You can sing any of the blood songs, but then immediately it is midnight. 
because the Bible says at midnight that angel began to pass through the land of Egypt at midnight so at midnight at exactly midnight everybody should begin to call on that Passover blood to cover them to cover their nation to cover their environment to cover their habitation and to cover their families exactly when it is 12 midnight you begin to plead that blood so pass over blood of Jesus pass over blood of Jesus envelope our nation pass over blood of Jesus envelope our environment pass over blood of Jesus envelope my habitation pass over blood of Jesus envelope my life pass over blood of Jesus envelope our nation pass over blood of Jesus envelope our environment pass over blood of Jesus envelope my habitation pass over blood of Jesus envelope me and my family pass over blood of Jesus envelope our nation pass over blood of Jesus envelope our environment pass over blood of Jesus envelope my habitation pass over blood of Jesus envelope me and my family pass over blood of Jesus envelope our nation pass over blood of Jesus envelope our environment pass over blood of Jesus envelope my habitation pass over blood of Jesus envelope me and my family continue to call that Passover blood of Jesus for 10 minutes five minutes to midnight you sing the song by midnight begin to call on that Passover blood of Jesus to pass through the land to pass through the habitation to pass through our family and then protect us God bless you Jesus and don't forget this vigil assignment this is your friend the school of prayer and deliverance Daniel Lulukoya continue to join the rest of the broadcast they will be put together to bless your life God bless you in Jesus name remember if the enemy has stolen from you recovery is by force God bless you in Jesus name Amen